an ideological thing. Um, but democracy is no longer really defined against some ideological op opponent, and nor is it anymore the sort of only route to prosperity and, uh, and success. It's perhaps today more a type of culture and a kind of society than just a way to organize politics. And the rules have changed. Well, the Americans can no longer just organize a tool in Chile and make that stick for, uh, for 20 years. Ten political oligarchs in Moscow can't just put their heads together and take the decisions that involve settling the future of nations by dispatching tanks. Well, they can try, but, uh, but uh, usually it doesn't work very well. To the disappointment of conspiracy theorists everywhere, the power of small close networks of power to settle global affairs is fading. Democracies, or theocracies, such as Iran, authoritarian governments in the Middle East, the dictatorships that remain around the world, all have the same problem these days. It's becoming more and more difficult to legitimize political power. People are less easily satisfied, they are more knowledgeable, they are more willing to challenge authority. And this happens in every type of society. It happens in democracies, it happens in dictatorships, it happens in every kind of society in between. The world is changing, and this time it is not being changed by politicians or by political ideologies. It's being changed by the transformative power of knowledge, communication, and technology. And this also changes what democracy is, and what it means to promote democratic values. Twenty years ago, it looked like democracy was going to sort of surf into a position of global dominance on the shoulders of uh, American and European uh, power. Those days are long gone. It's not going to happen. If democracy has a bright future, it's not because the world is going to be ruled by Americans and Europeans, because it's not going to be. For the first time in 500 years, the balance of power is shifting away from the West. If people around the world decide to embrace the democracy and the values that go along with it, it's going to be because they choose to and because they want to. Which brings me back to democracy as a type of society and a kind of culture. And this is the kind of democracy that emerges not from you know, political institutions, but from the way people <coughs> act and think uh, in society. It's such practical things as the practice of free speech, saying what you think, standing up for your own opinions and beliefs, respecting other people who do the same thing. Before that, it's the ability and the urge to form your own values, the opportunity to do so, and being surrounded by people who are supportive in doing that. It's about not accepting arbitrary power, power that has no other justification than power. It's about moving freely, exchanging ideas freely, accessing information freely. What sums up a lot of this is perhaps empowerment, the opportunity to give shape to yourself, to your life, and to some extent to society. Not perfectly and without reservations, but perhaps in, to a greater extent than in other kinds of societies. And in light of this, to promote democracy today is no longer to achieve, to wage some sort of ideological struggle. It's rather to support the values and practices that dominate the democratic culture. Openness, tolerance, independence, moderation, respect. Empowerment. Then it's up to people themselves. If empowered people don't choose democracy, they probably shouldn't. And that, via this very long detour, is... Uh, why we feel that LARP uh, is also a worthwhile thing uh, to support for its contribution to values such as this. It is no new insight that simulation type situations are excellent for practicing the handling of complex and ambivalent situations and issues. Rather than offering passive learning, it teaches for exposure to choice, which invites self-reflection, self-knowledge, and awareness of the consequence of choice. What indeed could be better suited to develop self-empowerment? It is also, perhaps, the only form of learning that is inherently resistant to indoctrination. Because real choice is incompatible with indoctrination. And even if you construct it in a way that predetermines choice or eliminates it in practice, the main effect will then be to draw uncomfortable attention to exactly that absence of choice. Or the next week, you'll be learning how to develop LARPs. I think what it really is about, in many ways, is developing people. I look forward to following today's program, also because as an old avid board gamer, I find the program fascinating in person, to be quite honest. So with that, I thank you for attention and wish you a good and successful summer school.
you very much, uh, Mr. Oslan, and the uh, Norwegian state as well for supporting this uh, event financially. We are getting started with the program. Yes, probably most of you have seen the uh, program in your wonderful files that you got uh, on the bus. If none of you have done it, so we better do this. <laughs> Uh, because it's really some important stuff, uh, apart from the lunch time and dinner time and face time and lake time, you'll find also quite many interesting parts of the program. And as Martin told you on the bus, that today, today is one of the busiest days because we'll start from the beginning, uh, getting the experience of what is love and getting the basics actually. And the basics is usually uh, the theoretical basics and the experience that you get. Uh, and the next part of our program is... Well, yeah. right now we will have uh, Eric Fartland who will talk next. After that, we will...